So as one final practice problem, uh, look at this and take a pause and try it. But what this is doing is this is combining the skills we learned in chapter four about stoichiometry with the skills that we learned in chapter three about uh, solutions. And so I'd like to bring these together because this is a skill we'll use in labs a lot. And, and it marries nicely with uh, our lesson about titration. And this is something that we call solution stoichiometry. So stoichiometry is typically mass to mass conversions, but we can also do concentration to concentration conversions. And then when we learn about gases, we can actually do pressure to pressure conversions uh, or volume to volume or moles to moles using the fundamental principle of stoichiometry that we, um, that's based on a mole to mole conversion at the very heart of it. So let's give this a try. So I've got this chemical reaction, um, a P4O10, reacting with water to form uh, phosphoric acid. Um, and I've got 7.3 grams of my starting material, and I've got enough water since it's my sol solvent in my solution um, that I know that all my P4O10 will react. So what is the concentration of the resulting solution in units of molarity? So this is a mass to molarity conversion rather than mass to mass. So let's see what happens. So we're going to have the same starting point though, which is nice. So I've got this 7.3 there we go, sorry, 7.3 grams of our P4O10. And because the heart of all of these problems is a mole to mole conversion, we need to get this into terms of moles so we can convert into the amount of another chemical within the reaction that we have. So I'm gonna want to multiply this by something that'll have moles of P4O10 on top and grams on the bottom. And that's going to be molar mass of P4O10. And if I go to my periodic table and I calculate this, I'm going to get a value that is 283.886 grams per mole. So I'll put that in. One mole is going to weigh 283.886 grams. Great. Okay. Now I'm in units of moles. I need to convert that into H3PO4. And so I'm going to need to have uh, moles of P4O10 on the bottom so they cancel out. And I'll have moles of H3PO4 on the top. And looking at my equation, it's not balanced. So that's what I need to do because this conversion factor comes from my coefficients. Uh, so switching gears, let's work on that. And I'm going to draw this a little bit bigger. So if I have P4O10 plus, uh, and just for brevity, I'm going to um, not include the phases. Uh, it's going to go to H3PO4. So I have uh, oxygen in all of them. So I'm going to do that last. I'm going to start with phosphorus. Um, because it's the heaviest element. Um, and so looking at phosphorus, I have four on my reactant side and only one on my product side. So I'm gonna put a four in front of my product. All right, now my phosphorus is balanced. So I'm gonna look at hydrogens next. I've got two on my reactant side, and now I have four times three, which is 12 on my product side. So I really need to multiply that water by six. All right, now it's time to balance my oxygens. So looking at this, from my reactants, I've got 10 coming from my P4O10, and then I have six times my subscript of one on my oxygen for six, for a total of 16 oxygen. All right, now looking at my products, I have four phosphates, and each phosphate has four oxygen. So four times four is 16. So they're already balanced, which is nice. So I will have uh, a mole ratio of my P4O10 to my phosphate of a one to four ratio. And so I'll go ahead and put in that one and that four here. Great. So at this point now, I know moles of my phosphate, and I could then use molar mass to determine the grams, but I, I don't need the mass. So I'm going to stop here and calculate that I have 0 0.102858 moles of my H3PO4. And this question is asking me about molarity. So I am going to calculate that, and I know my molarity is going to be moles over volume. That volume is going to be in liters. So I'll plug in that value I just, I just uh, calculated. All 
and looking at my problem, it tells me that I make a solution that's 750 milliliters. So that'll be my volume for my solution, but I need to make sure this is in units of liters, so I have to do a metric conversion. Uh, one liter will have 1,000 milliliters. So it's gonna be 0.75 liters. So now plugging this all into my calculator, I'm gonna get a value that is 0 0.14 molar. And I restricted myself to two sig figs because I had two sig figs in my 750 milliliters and I had two sig figs in my 7.3 grams. And so that's how you can use stoichiometry and also what we learned about concentration and molarity to be able to do uh, some calculations that are more useful in a lab setting.